So what makes a creator product good? And how do you launch a product? Today's episode of Creator Support is basically the ultimate guide to launching merchandise as a creator. And we have some surprises on today's episode. A surprise sponsor and a surprise guest joins us in the deep end. Colin. Samir. You're wearing a hat. I am. I don't normally wear hats. You don't typically hats wear hats. on Creator Support. You spend a lot of time working in hats to make sure you can wear them. Was that too much? Did I just expose you? No, no, no. I thought when you said working in hats... No, I, meant I wasn't like sure if you meant like I do my yeah. work in yeah. hats or working the hat in <laughs> to wear Work, the hat. Working the hat in. This working, is our hat. Yes. Yeah. This is our press publish hat. Which, that I have worked in. Yes. As well as worked in. Worked in. Yes. Yes. To wear in this moment. I will say this is one of my favorite fitting hats of all time. And we spent a lot of time developing this hat. We'll, tell, we'll talk more about our hats as well as we have a ton of creator products all over the table right yes. now in front of us. We're going to be trying some of these in the episode. And that's because this episode is sponsored by YouTube Shopping. Now, YouTube Shopping is a feature that over 100,000 creators use, including ourselves, Mr. Beast, Marquez Brownlee, Cassie Ho from Blogilates. You, you've probably seen it. It is where you watch a YouTube video and there's tagged products. There's a button that says view products. You can click that and purchase products directly from videos. There's also a merch shelf. We have it underneath our main channel. A ton of creators have this. Um, but where we're seeing it happen a lot more frequently now is in YouTube Shorts. Yes. And that's one of the coolest things about YouTube shopping. And um, they gave us some stats about this feature. Last year, there's over 150 billion views on YouTube Shorts videos and live streams with tagged products in wow. them. That's a ton of exposure for mm -hmm. products. And each of these videos becomes how I've been referring to it is like, it's a digital storefront. Yep. Where now all of a sudden you're watching a video, but it's actually a shopping experience too. I think Cassie Ho is like one of the best at this. We obviously featured her on the main channel. I mean, yeah, we spent a day with her and we yeah. know from speaking with her that it works. It works. And th these are creators who, like her, who are building, she's built two eight-figure businesses off the back of her YouTube channel and has transitioned fully into shorts that are all about the products. Mm -hmm. So in this episode, we're going to be answering your questions about YouTuber products. And I think primarily because we're seeing this feature roll out to all creators right now. If you're in the partner program, you can connect your store in YouTube Studio. If you have Shopify, Spreadshop, or a Spring store, you can connect it and have the ability to start tagging products in your videos. And this connection of content and commerce we're seeing is like one of the most powerful brand building connections. Um, we have some of the biggest brands in front of us right now. Feastables, obviously a massive brand today. Mm -hmm. And that's largely because you pair the exposure of YouTube videos with a product. So that's what we're diving into today. I mean, thank you to YouTube Shopping. Second sponsor on Creator Support. Super cool. Ever in I, the history of the show. I also think just like YouTube supporting the show is really is cool. It's very nice. Yeah. Okay, the first question comes from the Discord, from Mo Marab. What's the best way to go about finding a product that fits your audience? It says, hello, Colin and Samir. I've been looking to release merchandise for my audience, but my past attempts haven't really worked. I don't want to oversaturate my page with shilling merchandise. Advice? Okay, so. I'm going to make us some uh, Chamberlain coffee vanilla matcha great. while we talk about this. So something to think about when you want to launch merchandise to your audience. You always want whatever you launch to be an extension of the value prop of your content. Mm, yes. So for us, right, everything we make is to educate and empower the next generation of creators. We're working on uh, a course, mm -hmm. same value prop. Right. Even releasing these hats, the press publish merch, that taps into the empowerment side of our mission statement, right? Yeah. Like you read this mantra, press publish, it's all about inspiring you to press publish, reminding you to do it, and just like identifying with being a creator. I think one of the value props that we wrote down early on when we were talking about the Colin and Samir brand was community. Mm -hmm. And thinking about how to build community around this thing that we all do, which is create. And we started talking about like, what's the just do it of the creator economy? Yeah. And it was press publish. Mm -hmm. It's an action. It's a, uh, a way to signify that you're a member of the creator community because it's an action we all take. Yeah. So our first entry into merchandise was like, essentially a way to identify yourself and say, I am a part of this creator community, which is also what our content does. Mm -hmm. Whether it's our newsletter or our YouTube videos, if you watch our stuff, you are like, I am a member of this community. So that's, that's how we thought about it. And I think that's the most important thing is to say a, a value prop 
extension. Yep. So write down your value prop that your content offers to your audience. And then think about like what products match that? What products are an extension of that? Yeah, I think especially when you're in the position that Mo is in, which is just starting out. Mm -hmm. Like it's imperative that mm -hmm. the first product you launch yeah. has some connection to the value prop of your content. There are some creators who get to really major scale and they have such wide audiences that they can start to, you know, not only advertise for major brands that have major audiences and are looking for mass scale, but they can create products that also reach that scale. Mm -hmm. There was a... Um there was a tweet. Now, I want, I want to talk about some of the products here because we have a mix of products in front of us, right? We have our hat, which we just talked about. We have Airax Pizzafy. We have Mark Rober's Crunch Labs. We have Chamberlain Coffee. Now, a lot of these products that we have in front of us are consumable, mm -hmm. meaning like we're, we're about to drink Chamberlain Coffee. You can eat Pizzafy. Uh, you know, Prime is another one that we don't have on the table, but that, you know, Prime is a, is a massive creator brand. Um and then when we look at Mark Rober's Crunch Labs, I think that's a great example of a value prop extension. Mm. When you watch a Mark Rober video, you're learning about engineering and science. It's making engineering um, more accessible. It's making it fun, interesting, and you're like, that's so cool that he's building this stuff. And what Crunch Labs does is you essentially get your own version of a Mark Rober project. Yeah, you get to build. That well, you get to build. Mm -hmm. You and I did this in Austin with my nephews. We did. And it was so fun. It was a great time. It, it felt this- I felt very accomplished. I felt super accomplished. Because you and I did most of the work, if we're going to be honest. Right, if we're going to be honest. If we're just going to be honest about didn't do a lot that scenario, yeah, yeah, yeah. you and I did a lot of the work. Now, with Crunch Labs, what's really cool, um, Mark integrates really well into his videos. Like, basically brings it up at the end of every single video. Mm -hmm. uh, it's super natural. And, you know, it's also part of YouTube shopping. It's on the merch shelf. It's 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 tagged in the videos. But I think that's a really important note too, is that we call that content product fit. Yeah. Where can you naturally talk about the product in your content? Yep. And admittedly, that hasn't been super easy for us with our apparel. Like we yeah. can wear it, but talking about it is not something that has come as naturally for us. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe being more meta about you know, how the merchandise business is going is yeah. probably- That's more on brand That's more us. on brand for us. Similar to how Cassie Ho is actually bringing her audience now behind the scenes with creating yeah. her, her clothing line and her products. I think Cassie Ho is probably one of the best examples of every single video is about the product now on shorts. And then each one of those, you know, is the opportunity to go buy that product. Um, I got a really, really early gripe. Okay. Normally I would never bring up a gripe this early yeah. in the episode. However- Earlier, yeah. before you started talking, you said there was a tweet and then you just completely changed topics and started talking about what was on the table. There was a, um, there was a tweet. Now I want, I want to talk about some of the products here because we have a mix of products in front of us, right? We have our uh, That's like a cliffhanger for me. I'm sitting here going, what? What if, about the tweet? If you know what anything about me, see? that's pretty common practice uh, for but me like, to just start a sentence and then and completely then shift it. You totally abandoned it. Uh, Okay, you're right, Colin. There was a tweet okay, uh, thank from you. Will Bauman, who's one of the founders of Fourth Wall, uh, which is a creator merch company. He said, it'd be cool to go through products that creators most often succeed with, consumables and collectibles. Mm. Consumables for creators with outsized distribution. Example, Feastables, Chamberlain Coffee. Collectibles for creators who are growing their community, merch drops, or games. I love that distinction. Fantastic distinction there. Because... You know, this press publish hat, this is a collectible. Yeah. It's not made for mass distribution to like show up on a shelf in the mall. Mm -hmm. This is directly for the people who are listening, who mm -hmm. are watching. Who are fans of ours. Who are yeah. fans of ours that want to resonate, mm -hmm. you know, with this I, mantra. I think we wanted to, you know, make sure it wasn't so niche that you couldn't, like you could still wear it if you're not yeah. part of mm -hmm. our direct community, but you have to be a creator to wear it. What's really cool about it being a collectible is that when someone else wears the hat, what we've heard is that people are meeting each other by wearing the hat, right? So yeah. again, it's like, it's for communities. Um, and I really like the distinction that in order for you to do a consumable, you have to have a massive audience, like a massive audience. Um, or a really good idea mm -hmm. that stands alone and is able to travel outside of your core audience. Yeah. It helps to have the mass audience, 100%, if you're going to launch a consumable. Like, yeah. that's the competitive advantage for Feastables and for Prime. I haven't tried these Mr. Beast Feastables cookies, but they're open. Okay. Um, people in our office are trying them. They're plant-based, gluten-free, peanut butter, chocolate chip. Let's try a consumable. Okay. 
Now, I do want to bring up something real quick after we try these. I like that. Mm -hmm. I'm a peanut butter guy, though. I mean, I love peanut butter. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. That's good. Great. I wanted to bring up, even if you're going to launch collectibles as a creator, when's the right time? Like, when do you know that it's a good time to launch merchandise? And there was actually something that we thought about that is a stat in YouTube that we looked at. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a really interesting thing to bring up. So for us, when we thought about launching merchandise, we had a lot of ideas initially when we started the channel. We actually didn't really know what to talk about on the Colin and Samir channel originally. We wanted to talk about entrepreneurship and internet entrepreneurship and creativity. So we launched skateboards and made that a subject matter of the channel. So that's one option as a creator, right? Skateboards. No matter who you are. <laughs> well, I think- make, Four wheels, piece of wood. Making the product journey your content yeah. is interesting, right? So like the, the YouTube channel is about launching the product. That's interesting. Um, that's a way to go about launching a product. But that kind of suggests that your primary thing is running your product brand and your secondary thing is covering it, like yes. documenting the process. It doesn't imply that you found audience first, yes. gotten to know them over a long period of time and That's understood right. their wants and needs. Yeah. Because then you can launch a product with a lot more mm -hmm. assurance. That was really hard for us because we weren't product first. We were media first and we were having a hard time keeping up with the product business. So we shut that down. Then as we looked at merchandise again, years later, once we built an audience, the stat we looked at was views from subscribers and returning viewers. Mm -hmm. Because what we wanted to look at and be sure of is that even if we were driving millions of views, were those from new people or were, did we have an honest community? And I think in order for you to launch collectibles, merchandise, any type of product, you either have to have outsized distribution, like you know, tens of millions of views, I would say, or, or you know, millions of views, mm -hmm. or a very loyal community. Yeah. And the way to know that is, you know, there's multiple ways to know that. You can launch a community, you can have a subreddit, a discord, um, you know, different, different things like that. Or you can look at how many people are returning. How consistent is mm -hmm. your community? Like, how, how consistent are they watching your videos? And I think, you know, from a creator perspective, many times we've been apprehensive to launch mm -hmm. merchandise or launch a product. And some of the concern for me has been, okay, it's a hat. There's a lot of hats out there. Yeah, yeah. It's not reinventing the wheel here. This is a hat. Anyone could wear any hat. Mm. But there is value to getting to identify with the community mm -hmm. and to get to identify from an early standpoint and say, mm. oh, I've been a part of that creator's journey early on. You and I always said that if Casey Neistat yeah. had merch really early, we would have bought it just to be like, yeah, we're here before he started daily Agreed. vlogging. Agreed. You know? Yeah, because the connection to the content is so strong that you want to signify yourself as a part of the community. And know? I think now more than ever, there's probably a lot of pressure amongst creators of, oh, if I launch a product, it has to be yeah. something revolutionary. It has to be I prime, agree. feastables, whatever. But I also wouldn't uh, ignore the group of your audience that really just wants to support you and signify that they're a member of your community. I agree with that. Yeah. And some creators take it really far, like The Yard, when we talked about them launching fishing gear. Mm -hmm. That is so niche. It's an inside joke. Well, I think also Eric launching with he when he pranked Jimmy, he pranked Mr. Yeah. Beast, right? Mm -hmm. Got Mr. Beast arrested. Releasing a limited edition shirt uh, with, with, the, with the mugshot. Mm -hmm. I bought it because I was like, that's funny. And that's- I'm a part of that. I'm a part of that moment in internet history. Yeah. So yeah, I think those, like breaking this up, I think Will did a great job of saying consumables, collectibles. And I think there's- you can even go deeper in those categories of like really limited supply collectibles that are actually directly connected to a YouTube video. And they may not be big business opportunities. Right. Yeah. But they're community builders. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how we look at our merchandise. Mm -hmm. You know, like when we drop our limited edition snorkels, I'm not trying to get into the snorkel section. It's going to be a collectible. Of the sporting goods store. <laughs> that's no, a collectible. That's a collectible. Yeah. Are we actually going to do that? You'll find out. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, You'll wake up one morning and I'll just be rolling in a box of snorkels yeah, that I bought off yeah, Alibaba. Yeah, yeah. I think the thing that I want to <laughs> the thing that I want to figure out with our products is with Can the, I try the matcha? Yeah, Sorry. yeah, oh yeah. We We're sitting here with Chamberlain Cheers. matcha. It's probably really hot though. And um I heated it up. I just wanted to try it a little here too much. Go. All right, Chamberlain yeah. vanilla matcha. This is a very visual episode for the listeners. Mm. That's nice. That's very nice. I, I like matcha. I love the vanilla. Yeah. Wow. That's it's subtle. That's delightful. the vanilla is incredibly subtle, which yeah. I like. I, I love subtle vanilla. Mm. I have a gripe with TMV. Too much vanilla. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. 
That's good. Thanks. So the one thing that I think we could get better at and that I really like to see with creators is when the shorts are about, you know, I think shorts open up an opportunity to be more entrepreneurial and to talk about product. Mm -hmm. I think Cassie Ho really showed us that. But I think there's like really cool opportunities to, within the shorts format, tell really concise stories about products. Yeah, I think because, you know, in long form, many times you're integrating the product into a different narrative, mm -hmm. right? Because you're not telling the behind, the, most creators aren't telling the behind the scenes story. Yeah. Mr. Beast is not telling the behind the scenes story of Feastables That's on true. his channel. So yeah. you have to integrate it somehow mm -hmm. and be clever. But in a short, it's kind of like this, immediate pitch or immediate ad. Yeah, you can make the whole thing about it. You can make the whole thing about it. Yeah. And it, it can still be interesting and worth someone's time. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more impactful sometimes when it comes to selling. Yeah. I mean, this, uh, these, which we should also try, the Sour Green Apple Carl Gummies. Um, these were launched through a short on Mr. Beast 2. And that short was shoppable. Like you, you, it, yeah. had, it had this as the tagged product. So you can click it and, and buy it immediately, um, which was really cool. We should try these. And then we should answer another question from Dino, long time listener and caller. Video question. Video question from Dino. Okay, while I open this, let's play the video question. I have a lot of questions about merch and I'd like to ask two if that's okay. One of them is how do you sell high quality products without breaking the bank? It seems as if every single print on demand company just has a list of really cruddy options and there's not much to work with. Second, is there seems to be two strategies you guys have used with merch. One of them is taking pre-orders and selling out. And the other one is having an ongoing list of inventory that you're continually selling. Both of those have their hardships, I'm sure. And I'd love to hear a little bit more behind the scenes of which one you prefer, which one's easier, maybe. And then the difficulties of both of those. Thanks. Appreciate it. Cheers. Yeah. Whoa, I just entered a new gear. Okay, I don't eat gummies. Just put like a jet pack yeah, on my back. Yeah, that's what it felt like. I don't eat gummies. Until now. <laughs> Until now. That was good. <laughs> yeah, that was surprisingly it's good. It's my eyes. It's either the gummies okay. or the matcha and the cold brew. Something's really waking me up here. <laughs> Carl, nice work with these. Well these done. are These are delicious. Um, okay, Dino's question. So let, first he talked about print on demand and, and the concept of like quality yeah. with creators. And- it's a good question. I, I think um, to start, like where, how did we go about, you know, making merchandise? Uh, it, it, you first, you know, you have the idea. The second thing I would do in the, in like a merch checklist is what we talked about earlier. Do you, do you have a regular community who is interested in transacting with you? Mm -hmm. And, you know, bringing them into that potential, that world, you get feedback, which is important. And then when you go out for looking for a partner, to produce with. When we first started out, I was very adamant about like, I'm going to go find the source of the t-shirts. I will find the printer. I will take the t-shirts to the printer. I will oversee it. I will, you know, like we will ship it. And that proved time and time again to be an unbelievable amount of bandwidth and a low quality because we weren't experienced. Yeah. So I, when we came, you know, to, to launching Press Publish Merch, I was like, we're not, we're not going to do this ourselves. We're going to find a partner. And print on demand for me personally is just not something I feel like I'm comfortable with from a quality perspective. I mean, we did that too. We did that if too. We're, if we're going all the way back oh, yeah, to, to lacrosse, lacrosse network. network. Yeah, days, we did like print on You and demand. I started with, yes, you going out or you yeah, and I going yeah, yeah, out yeah, to, to downtown, downtown finding yeah. uh, suppliers, printers, the yeah. whole thing. And the bandwidth was too high and we couldn't keep the quality up either. Yeah. Uh, then we went print on demand for a period of time and we would get tweets yeah. and emails about, you know, designs being off to the side. We, we or, would get photos that like this design was printed a different color. Yeah. This one was not centered. It looks and like it, it ran out of ink or something. And yeah. the biggest thing for creators to understand is that the business of being a creator is the advertising business, which is typically you have a few advertising partners that, that you know, as you grow, they take up the majority of your revenue. Most creators operate like that, where you know 90 some odd percentage of their revenue is coming from either YouTube AdSense, which is like, you're not dealing with the client, you're just getting a check every month. 
sponsorship and brand deal, which you are interfacing with someone, whether it's your agent, manager, or the brand itself, you launch merchandise. You've just opened up potentially thousands of customers. And even if it's 100. Even if it's 50. That's overwhelming. Yeah. If something goes wrong. If something goes wrong. If someone wants to return something, there's customer service. Like those are those are considerations that we we thought about and said, we don't have the time, space, bandwidth, or team to do that ourselves, to individually ship out you know, goods. We've sold uh, over a thousand of these hats. We're not going to ship out a thousand hats. We're not going to respond to a thousand emails of people saying, where's my hat? Or give me a shipping update or anything like that. Um, so we didn't want to do print on demand because we wanted to be able to see the quality. Mm -hmm. So we partnered with uh, a company called Fan of a Fan, which is, um, you know, partially owned by Yes Theory. And yes, they're really good friends of ours. And I think their mm -hmm. Seek Discomfort merchandise is some of the best merch uh, in the creator economy. Yeah. And so immediately, like, trusted quality, trusted people. Local. Local was able to drive to their warehouse and see how everything was made, watch the embroidery happen, mm -hmm. and be really comfortable with the experience. Yeah. That's extremely important. As we've mentioned before on the show, like, the, the foundation of your business as a creator is trust. Your audience has to trust you. Mm -hmm. So when you ship something out to them, you know, if it's not good quality, if it comes late, if something's off, customer service wasn't great, unresponsive, they're not going to buy again. Yeah, it's kind of a give and take of, if you do print on demand, it could be easier at the beginning, yeah. but potentially harder for you if something goes wrong. And you may lose the trust of, yeah. of your um, audience. Whereas with going with fan of a fan, mm -hmm. it's actually not it's not totally easy. Like it takes work yeah, yeah. to be yeah. able to find them mm -hmm. and- And work with them on- And work yeah, with yeah, them. Like it's yeah. not an e like making merchandise is just not easy. Yeah. But if you put in the work up front, it gets a lot easier on the back end. Like mm -hmm. you said, we sold a thousand hats. Yeah. They handle so much of that process for us, including quality control. Exactly. Yeah, totally. And we have one partner that we can work with. Yeah. Um, now the margins are lower, meaning we, we don't, make as much money as if we did it all by ourselves. But I think what we undervalue sometimes as creators is time, mm -hmm. you know, and the slow process of, of exploring is merchandise viable. So the second part of Dino's question was drop culture versus always on inventory. So what that means is like the first time we launched merch, we did pre-orders and we said, here's the merch collection, order it now. We'll ship it out in three to four weeks. That is, uh, is an awesome way to have very little risk. You're not spending any money on inventory. Yep. You're basically seeing who buys and then and then making enough product to fill those orders. The problem that I had with that um, was the delayed shipping timeline, right? <laughs> like what happens there is that people order and then it's not till three or four weeks and we were dealing with supply chain issues. So that turned into like, you know, for some people five or six weeks before they receive their merch. If we're talking gripes as a buyer, if I buy something on the internet, yeah, I, I want it. I want it at my house like within a week. Yeah, well, you, know? you you have there's a gap between when you buy something, when you press buy, yeah. the excitement you have at that moment. You yeah. don't want it to be five to six weeks later because the no. excitement will have changed, right? You want yeah. it to be like that two week, ideally, sort uh, of. Yeah, ideally shorter. Ideally yeah. shorter. Yeah, yeah, like a week. Um, so that you get that dopamine of, mm -hmm. wow, I just, I was excited to, to put my money up for this thing. Yeah. Here it is. I get to put it on my head and support this brand. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, but I will say as a first go around, we needed to understand the type of demand from our audience. We needed to understand if our audience was interested in merchandise. So pre-orders allowed us to say, here's what we're doing. Are you into this? And then we saw a ton of orders. I think on the first one, we had like 800 orders total, right? Or, or maybe more. I think it was mm -hmm. 800 orders in the first few days. And we're like, oh, okay. So our audience is, is interested. Um, so our next go around, we used that data to then buy inventory mm -hmm. and to say, okay, let's plan for around 1,000 orders in the first week. So let's buy enough inventory for that because we want the shipping experience to be, I purchase... I receive it. And you think about now with like the concept of even like, you know, when people are doing these limited drops connected to YouTube videos, I, you know, I watch a YouTube video, I order, you know, with it like right there. I want to receive it. 
You know, like that, that whole moment yeah. is, it's a part of a momentum, right? It's mm-hmm. like, I'm excited. I want it. I, uh, that's, that's like a cool experience and moment. So I think that, um, inventory is okay. You have to spend more money and you have to stock inventory and you have to have a partner that has a warehouse and that can do fulfillment, but the customer experience should be number one. Your mm-hmm. audience's experience should be number one. They should be like, I ordered and I received it. So I feel like I need to tell you. Uh, that you have Chamberlain coffee matcha on your sweater. Similarly to when something's in your teeth or on your face when you're eating yeah, and someone I, doesn't tell I, you. Making matcha at this table was not easy, Colin. And no, it's, it's all right. It looks like table. you, it's off your sweater for the most part. Okay. All right. Just Upsetting. didn't want it to go till the end of the episode. Upsetting. Yeah. Upsetting. You're good. Um, Don't worry. All good. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Moving Next on. question. Uh, one thing about like receiving products too, I wanted to read a stat that the YouTube shopping team sent us, um, which is in 2022, there were over 700 million views per week on unboxing videos on YouTube, growing more than 15% year over year. It's a really interesting trend to think about because one of the, I'm not a mathematician. Okay. But would that be over a billion (laughs) views in two weeks? Mm Mm-hmm. Just wanted to be clear about that. Again, we're not mathematicians I'm not here a on mathematician. the show. Not us. Maybe not you, here. But not us. That's not this show. What, what's really fascinating right now is that, you know, you look at MKBHD with the Adams shoes. He's a reviewer. When everyone res- receives those shoes, they are going to unbox and review those shoes because yeah. creator audiences are creators. Yeah. So if you create an experience. I mean, look at, look at what we have in front of us, right? Like mm-hmm. trying feastables is a content category on YouTube, Yeah, which means the amplification of these creator brands is astronomical. It's similar to when Hot Ones started releasing hot sauce early mm. on, and then you could buy, you know, the actual packs. Yeah. Right. Because I'm sure they knew people didn't just want to try it at home. Yeah. They wanted to film themselves trying the hot sauce because the reaction yeah. is part of the show. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you look on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, there are tons of people who are trying the hot sauces. Yeah. I think it's a good idea to, to try and encourage that behavior, not like force it, but yeah. organically encourage the behavior of, of unboxing. And that could be through like when, when someone posts a picture with, with the hat, which is really cool. We've seen like creators who are on sets, creators who are making videos and they're wearing the hat or wearing the shirt. And, you know, we, we love to see that. We mm-hmm. authentically think that's super cool. So we share a lot of that through. So that's like a small amount of encouragement of like when you when you receive our merchandise, you know, post it. Yeah. But if we had like, you know, if there if there's something like I'm sure MKBHD's audience is going to do like really high end reviews of mm-hmm. that shoe because that's the culture of that community. In 8K. Yeah. yeah. And Mr. Beast's audience, like again, this is Feastables has a culture of sharing. Eric with Pizzafy this is an inherently shareable product. You want to share this mm-hmm. on Instagram or on YouTube of like, I tried Pizzafy on blank. We yeah. did it in a short that blew up. We did. Um, so yeah, I think it's really interesting because we talk about content product fit, which means you don't have to change your content to introduce a product. Yep. So Emma Chamberlain's a great example of that when she was drinking coffee Mm-hmm. slot in her coffee instead of the other coffee she was drinking. Nothing changes. Yeah. Lily Havesh, Domino Toppler, came out with her own Great one. Domino set. Mm-hmm. You could replace the Dominoes that yep. she's using with her own brand. Does not change the content. Amanda Raish Lee, yeah. who's a creator who does bullet journaling. Um, and she was doing like these bullet journal videos that were getting millions of views, launched her own line of journals and Did you know, really well. no, yeah. nothing changed about the content. Mm-hmm. So I think that's like, that content product fit is one thing. The interesting thing is like audience product fit where, you know, even with Amanda, if you're watching Amanda for the way she sets up her bullet journal and you buy one of her bullet journals, you will likely make a video about how you set up your bullet journal because she showed you that making those videos, like that's how you found her is by making those videos. Mm -hmm. So that level of like audience product fit, I think is one of the X factors of why the next billion dollar brands will be made by creators because the culture, like what other, what other product is the culture that I receive it and then I make a video about it? Even with Prime, there is a culture of making memes out of Prime yeah. that in some way started from the top. Logan and mm-hmm, KSI mm-hmm, mm-hmm. sharing different memes about their own True. product, right? And mm-hmm. that 
produces a culture of their audience, their buyers making memes to share. Totally. Okay, we got a tweet from Jaden LP. He says, what are the biggest don'ts when launching a creator business? Okay, what are the biggest mistakes to avoid? I'm going to bring up a Tyler the Creator bit that we bring up quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, I love that. I know where you're going. Yeah, I love uh, basically one. he just says, like, when you put something out into the world, a lot of people, like, promote it that day, that week, and then kind of trail off. Mm -hmm. So I think as creators, the, the biggest don't is... Uh, don't only think about like the launch campaign. You have to think about the repetition and like how it becomes, how your merchandise becomes a character in your universe. Um, because like Prime is a character. Logan Logan said this at one point um, where he said, did you finish the Tyler the Creator I thing? I think so. I, thought, no, I think what he was saying was, don't stop marketing your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like your best stuff. Yeah. Don't expect that people know about it today. Like always keep marketing something that you did. Even if it was 10 years ago, if you thought it was good, keep marketing. Yes. Yeah. So that's the don't is like, don't only think about the short term yeah. of like the launch. Yeah. Think about what does it look like in, in the next 52 weeks? How are you still talking about yes. this? So uh, what I was saying about what Logan said on Impulsive one time was that Prime, his relationship to Prime, he brings it up every day. And there might be some people who are like, it's too much. He brings it up too much. Um, but because he doesn't stop bringing it up, mm. it's not weird when he integrates it into things, when he's doing WWE and Prime's there. Or yeah. like, you know, what he was suggesting was that some creators, when they talk about their own projects, it sounds like an endorsement, like a brand deal. Yeah. Because they don't bring it up often enough. So when they when they bring it up, when they talk about it, it's like they just like any other brand deal they mm. did. And I think that's a really important note as like an error to avoid. Like don't make your own brand feel like, like a, a sponsorship. Deal. Yeah. It should be your own brand. Mm -hmm. And that's that's hard to do. And that's why having content product fit is actually so important. If you yeah. if you authentically have it, uh, and there's a spectrum to it, and not every product you launch is going to be a perfect fit. Yeah. But if you do really have it, then it naturally is integrated into what mm -hmm. you're doing. Another thing along these lines from our conversation with Doug DeMuro yeah. around launching a product. Right. He said that when he launched Cars and Bids, he didn't tease it, he didn't talk about it at all until it was actually live. Mm -hmm. So his biggest marketing initiative, his first video about it that got the word out, it wasn't like, and it drops in two weeks. Yeah, It was, no. Right now, as you're watching, you can go it's make live. a transaction on Cars and Bids. Yeah, And, you know, I think some people do launch strategies really well and build a lot of hype. So it's not that you shouldn't build hype because mm -hmm. I think some people are really well suited to do that. Yeah. But I do really like what Doug is saying. If you think your first video, or your first initiative is going to create the biggest amount of noise, make sure that that's when the product is, is, is available. Make sure yeah. that that's when the product is available. Okay, here's a question from the Discord from Light Serpent. How much should the brand depend on the creator? Thinking about stuff like merch sales and other income streams, is there a thing as being too dependent? Would all sales coming from the actual creator's content be the goal at the beginning or too dangerous? What happens if the merch or brand far exceeds the creator's actual content? Do you take a step back and become a businessman first, like Mr. Beast, or do you outsource that? Okay, a couple different topics. Yeah, I think question. this goes back similarly to consumables versus collectibles. Mm. If you have a collectible like this hat, it relies a lot yeah. on you and I as a creator. <laughs> You get to the point where you have Cassie Ho with Pop Flex mm. and Blogilates, Blogilates equipment uh, and apparel that you can buy in Target. Mm. Yes, her face is on it, but someone's walking through Target doesn't yeah. necessarily rely on her as much anymore. I, I think it's interesting because it is your unique advantage, right? Definitely. Like, There's no fe doubt about it. Feastables, on the front, it has the Mr. Beast logo. And on the back, it has Mr. Beast's face. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Rober's, Crunch Labs. It says by Mark Rober on the bottom. Yeah. I think Crunch Labs is an interesting one because I think Crunch Labs is actually not dependent on Mark. I think in the short term it is, but in the long term it has a lot of legs. Yeah. The the unique aspect of Crunch Labs is it does come with like exclusive videos with Mark. His videos are the thing that's pushing it. It's probably in the beginning the merchandise should be dependent on the creator in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It should be connected to the content. That is the competitive advantage. That is the competitive That's the whole advantage. thing. It's the whole thing. We are making YouTube videos and we're selling products. Like that. that is the whole thing. Um, that we are building a deep connection with an audience that is willing to transact with us. But over time, the biggest brands will be the ones that can sit on a shelf and 
you know, the inverse could potentially happen too, where someone, someone could buy Crunch Labs. Like I, I got it for my nephews. Now, you know, their parents can talk about it with other parents and be like, we have this great box called Crunch Labs and it could scale. And, and the actual like experience of the build box could just be the thing. Um, but I think in the short term, if you're not building a product that's connected to the creator, then you're, you're fighting the same battle as every other e-commerce company, right? Or yeah. every other product brand. You have distribution. That is, that is the thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, it's about figuring out how to authentically integrate it regularly. I think that's like the biggest takeaway from this. Yeah, and I think if we're to talk about our newsletter, The Published Press, yeah. in the beginning, it was incredibly dependent on you and I, even just from a day-to-day -day basis yeah. of how much like work we had to do, mm -hmm. right? And over time, you know, we now have writers, editors, like it's on a day-to-day -day basis, we're not as heavily, we're involved, yeah. but we're not as heavily involved True. as we used to. We gain new subscribers now more often than we did in the beginning without us talking about it, Yeah, right? Like it's becoming a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, independent. Yeah. Although it still makes total sense yeah. for it to be a part of our narrative, what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, and for us to to push it and promote it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there, it's, I, it's totally. A, I think I think on merchandise specifically, there's active selling and there's passive selling. And passive selling is, you know, when we first launched our merch, uh, we had the merch shelf on on YouTube, and people started buying our products immediately because, you know, we do, let's say, at, at, you know, at the time when we launched the merch we were doing like 10 million views a week. So that means our content surfaces are being exposed to that many people and all of those surfaces have the products tagged to them. That allowed us to be passive sellers and just say, you you know, the video's out, you could discover it. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to drive the type of revenue as an active seller will. And I think Cassie Ho is the ultimate active seller. Every single video is about the product brings you behind the scenes of the development of the product. The active seller is talking about the product in the video, and then you're able to purchase immediately. Mm -hmm. So I think in in any project we have, like when you are a passive member of it, where you're like, it's available, you could find it, you could click the link in my description, you can get it from the merch shelf, you can see that there's a tagged product here and get it. You will capture a small portion of the audience who will, who will engage with it. But the goal is to figure out how to make good enough content that is active, that is actively selling the product without yeah. shoving it down people's throats, you know, yeah. without making it feel like, oh, that felt icky. That was like not. That's the goal if launching products and merchandise is a huge part a huge of part your of, goals. Yeah, if you want to yeah. launch merch, that's that's how you have to yeah. do it. Um, all right, I feel like we should get these products off the table. I have so much matcha all yeah, over. There's, there's so much matcha We've got all Okay. From Aaron Aztec, regarding creator merch, should all creators try and create a brand outside of their own brand? Example, KSI and Logan with Prime, or is merch with the creator's logo and name still okay? Should all creators try and branch out? I think merch with the creator's name is absolutely still okay, and it goes back to what Ooh, I was saying you earlier. You do think so? Yeah, I think so. I think it goes back to giving the audience an opportunity to identify from an early stage I don't think, I think it's a big time collectible. I don't think it will scale beyond you by I any know. means. I, I think, well, first of all, I think it depends on if you have a cool name. Yeah. But like, would people buy Colin and Samir merch? If our, if we had a shirt that said Colin and Samir. People have asked for that. I don't think we're going to do it, but I don't think it's like a no-go. Well, if people are asking, then maybe we'll do it. No, but people have asked. But like and, our face and, logo. And we've, we've talked about that before of maybe doing like a really limited edition. Yeah, yeah I could see that. But I, I don't. I like the press publish mantra because someone can wear it. It's yeah. a little more subtle. It's more conversation. Even when I'm wearing it sometimes, someone doesn't know about our channel. Someone will yeah. just come up to me and be like, what's that hat all about? I mean, I, same with Seek Discomfort. Yeah, I love, exactly. Like, Seek the Discomfort by really Yes cool. Theory. Yeah. You can stand for that and it's a conversation starter. Yeah. Even if you don't know who Yes Theory is. Mm -hmm. Whereas if someone's wearing a shirt or a hat in public that just says Colin and Samir, no one's coming up yeah. to them and saying, what is that? I don't think that means that you shouldn't do it. Like, I think if you want to and your audience wants to identify with your show, because mm. sometimes creators have channel names. It's not just their personal name. Like, if you have a cool channel name that's, like, interesting to wear on a on a hat or a shirt, I think it's okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think, I think we're moving into a place though, where like my, my perspective is I think creators are getting a lot more creative with a brand that can live on beyond them. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the collectible category. Yes. But I think when you're making a brand, it's like, yeah, you know, but if you're a little kid and you're a big fan of dude, perfect. Okay. That's fair. Like I'm going to want to okay. support the shirt. Okay. All right. What do you guys think? This is a good topic to, to chat yeah. about in the comments uh, or in the discord. Like, let us know, can you still release merch with just your name on it? Or does it need to be a brand in and of itself? In it of itself. In it of in in it. In it. In it, in it of itself. In it of itself. Okay. Now that we're repeating that phrase, it feels like we're in the deep end, right? Yeah, we've made it. And for the first time in creator support history, okay. we have a special guest joining us what? in the deep end. Come on in. Hello. Okay, for the dramatic <laughs> effect, we have Michelle Correa. Michelle Correa, welcome to the deep end. Welcome I'm to the deep so end. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> yeah. Pull up a chair, pull up a mic. Hello, everyone. Wow. And I have gifts for you and guys. Michelle has brought merch wow. gifts. Wow. I, I got to say, as the first guest here, yeah. <laughs> this set is even more exciting in real life. Wow. wow. Thank watching. you. That's great. Yeah. Uh, hi, Michelle. Hello. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm here with you guys. Well, it's great to have you in the deep end. It's great Thank to have you, you here in the deep end. Um, you did come bearing gifts. I did. Which is exciting. Yes, uh, yes. And very topical for this episode, which was crazy that it just worked out like this. I know. Great. I just happened yeah. to be coming by today. I know. It's yep. amazing. So let's see. Um, <laughs> what do you got? Let's see what okay, you got. Here's what I got. I wasn't anticipating doing this on camera, but um, this is for you guys. Oh, my God. So with a handwritten so note. Nice. Okay. For the listeners out there, Michelle has a big bag. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this with is, a with um, what looks like maybe a sticker from your wedding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta use them yeah. somewhere. Yeah, I was like, you know, it's from me and Garrett. Yeah, so we'll yeah. just use it here. Too. Okay, handwritten note, which is very sweet. Um, wow. Well, Samir wow. reads the note. This is sweet. I'm not going to read it aloud. This feels <laughs> private. Yeah, you can keep it. Um, keep it to yourself. Very cool. But um, wow. sorry, this, you know, this is so, all wrinkled. I don't know. That's okay. It that's the best present. You know, I'm not that a is gift. what, do you like, save this? Because hmm? it's like the most Indian thing to save all the, the paper, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah. My I'll, mom I'll, has, I'll take from, it back. Okay. from like yeah. all of my birthdays since I was a kid, she has like no a big way. bag of that. Um, wow. What's it called? Yes. Wrapping paper. Okay. So you're bringing us merch, yeah. Challenge Accepted Merch, which was a collaboration with Seek Discomfort. It was, yes. Which is Yes Theory's brand. Exactly. Um, that's and a this, perfect pairing. Yeah, Thank challenge you. accepted times seek discomfort. Yeah. Michelle Carre times yes theory. And so good. This was this coincided with the release of your boxing documentary. It did. Yeah, and you broke your nose boxing. I did. Andrea yes. Botez punched you in the face, <laughs> <laughs> but you won. But I won. But yes, won. that was worth yeah. it. <laughs> um, that was a great piece. And thank you. Yeah, this is cool. So talk us through some of the products that you released alongside that video. Yeah, absolutely. So I've never done formal apparel or like a merchandise line of any yeah. kind because anytime we would meet with a merch company, it mm. was always like, you do three t-shirts and see how they sell. And then yeah. if that mm. does well, we can do cooler stuff. But what, you know, the guys at Yes Theory and Seek Discomfort offered was an opportunity to do cool stuff right out the gate. Mm, cool. um, and obviously they have their own infrastructure, their own company yeah. that does a lot of specialty stuff. They've even done active wear before. Yeah. And I really mm. admire what they've built with their company and also what they stand for. You know, I think I, I totally agree with you and their company. It, it's a company called Fan of a Fan, which we'll link in the description because we talked about them earlier in the episode. They do our merchandise as well, mm -hmm. um, the press published stuff. Um, but I think in creators doing merch, um, experience matters so much. Like finding experienced people who yes. have done it. Mm -hmm. It is such a big endeavor to make good products yeah. uh, and to make good merchandise and to make unique stuff. Like these are hand wraps. And you said yes. this is the top selling item. This is our top selling oh, item are the boxing cool. hand wraps. And I think that it's worked well because obviously, you know, we have the t-shirts, we have the hoodies, challenge accepted hats, whatever. But the specialty items we've done, which I, I don't, I haven't seen another creator do hand wraps no, before. Yeah. No. The, also, it wouldn't be relevant to that many creators. Right. right? Yeah. I guess some of the boxing. I think this is also about saying that like you were there for that moment. Mm. Yeah. I watched Creator Clash. I watched your journey mm -hmm. in the documentary yeah. and the hand wraps say that. Yeah. Are you, you know, wrapping your hand right now? I'm thinking about it. <laughs> do you know how to do the wraps? Yeah. I don't know. Do you want me to wrap your hands sure. for you? Yeah, yeah, please, <laughs> yeah please. Please. Did I get the first part right at least? <laughs> yes, you did. Okay. You did. So you also, I, I was telling you, this episode is sponsored by YouTube Shopping, and it's kind of 
interesting because when you launched the video, mm -hmm. you had the merch shelf right underneath the video. We did, yeah. And yeah. that wasn't, you know, YouTube shopping was so helpful to make all of that happen because yeah. they were they were helping us behind the scenes, make sure everything was ready to go for the launch. Um, but yeah, it's been really exciting. Yeah. It's cool because you can have a big moment in a video that's paired with a big moment in merchandise. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like I, I think, and like the collectible nature of mm -hmm. I was there yeah. to watch this video is mm -hmm. really cool. So did Yes Theory come to you or did you go to Yes Theory? Well, we actually, sorry, I'm bad at multitasking. I'm going to finish okay. this up. So <laughs> am I. I'm really bad at multitasking too. Yeah. <laughs> but, I'll, I'll just wrap my own hand. I okay. think I know how to do it. Yeah. 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 Um, I could also just wrap mine and see where I end yeah. up. Yeah. Let's yeah. just yeah. see compare yeah. Samir's wrap to the other one. Well, we, we had spoken to Ryan at Fan of a Fan mm -hmm. about doing our own thing, kind of like you guys have done with Press Publish. Um, but Pedro at Yes Theory offered this opportunity to us. And we just thought, this is such a cool idea. And I, you know, a couple creators I know have done collab mini drops before. Yeah. Yep. But again, they have such an amazing infrastructure. And I'm really excited that we got to do this first. Because if we had gone with like a normal YouTuber merch company, it would have been just the t-shirts. Hmm. But because we were able to do these specialty items like the hand wraps or even like we did a, a journal cool. that I'm really oh, proud cool. of. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I like that a lot. And it's like a daily goal setting journal. Yep. Like these things are super specialty and they're our best seller items. Yeah, that's cool. Um, is it going to be like up for a while or is it a limited release? For right now, it's limited. Cool. So it's just a couple weeks. Yeah. We're going to see how it does and yep. then go from there. I like that. Um, but yeah, I think part of it for me was like, you know, I've been doing YouTube for a couple years now and Challenge Accepted is five years old at this point. And I always had this gut instinct of, we shouldn't just do a normal merch store. Like it just yeah. didn't feel right to throw mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. name on something and sell it on a t-shirt. I, I always had this gut instinct to, we've got to do something additive that yep. solves a problem. And that's what I think the, the hand wraps and the journal specifically do is that when you're watching this video and you ask the question, how could I do something like Michelle? The first barrier to entry is to have the right equipment. Yeah, mm, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So this is creator support. And yes. a lot of the questions that we answered today were about launching merch brands. What advice do you have for creators who are looking to launch their own products? Well, um, I guess I would say, first of all, is trust that gut instinct that I've had. I mean, yeah. I, again, was so resistant to, to just print on demand or yeah. anything for so long. Um, and I think it, it's paid off. Like if you feel like your best product is something a bit more specialized, then go I'm fully for that. lost here. You're this doing a, fine. It's a disaster. Oh, <laughs> You forgot to go in between your fingers. Yeah, under, no? understood. Yeah, <laughs> go, go. yeah. This, is a, this so, looks like I'm in. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm only just like looking paired, out of my eyes. Yeah, it's best paired with watching a YouTube video mm, on how to do yeah. it properly. Okay, you should but release a how-to. I could. Yeah, yes. you yeah, <laughs> yeah, because maybe a short or something. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. It, yeah. This is really tough. <laughs> okay, sorry. The, your advice. Yes. Yeah. So, like, if you want to do something a bit more specialized, yeah. then try to find the right people right. to pull it off and like. I think also be really brutal with the quality. Like I'm, mm, I was totally. very, very happy with the quality of, of we, what we were able to do. And I mean, y'all's apparel is the same, it's the same company. Yeah. Um, but a lot of companies we worked with or were thinking of working with it, it was not right, right. good quality. Yeah. And, and is this like, is this merch drop for you when you think about it? Is it about revenue? Is it about community? What's, what's it about? Uh, like from the business of being Michelle? I think from the business of me, it is about, it is about community more yeah. than anything. Obviously the revenue is mm -hmm. really exciting. It's been a really fun week to see um, what people are responding to and, and see everyone's like tweets and messages mm -hmm. about what they're getting. But it was an experiment. Yeah. Um, I think everybody's first product that they release is an experiment to see what do people want from me and how do they want to connect totally. with mm -hmm. the content and with our community. So this is creator support, which also means we're in the deep end, yes. which also means we need a gripe from you. You got a oh. gripe? Do you have a gripe? Hmm. You don't have to have a gripe. You don't well, want to force What are y'all's gripe. gripes? I need to know the tone of, of the gripes the for today. tone of gripes. Okay. <laughs> so- Of today's gripe. A gripe that I have that I put in the Discord is I got some avocado toast and mm. half the plate was full of um, like mixed greens that looked uh -huh. like they were store-bought that they knew I wasn't going to eat but it was just there to fill the plate. And justify the price. And justify yeah. the price. Yeah, yeah. That's a gripe. 
That's kind that of the That makes tone. me a little upset. Yeah. Right? You're kind of like, like it. Yeah, it's just like a little it's upset. just like, you know, you go to a nice place yeah. and they just like throw the greens mm-hmm. on there. Or like when you order an omelet and it comes with a salad. That feels Ex- weird to yeah, me because exactly. a salad's a lunch item. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, Wait, maybe no, that's my— If you're as well-traveled right? as me and you okay. go to okay. Europe, All right. you'll okay. notice that salads are common in breakfast. Um, but I would say, All right. an, yeah, yeah. Another gripe that I have. <laughs> See, I got a gripe with that. Uh, yeah. If you're as well traveled as me, you would know. Uh, another gripe that I have is when you order a cappuccino and someone says, "What size?" A cappuccino is one size. You don't say what size to a cappuccino. That's a crazy. Yeah. Thing. I don't drink coffee, so I okay. have no well, that's idea. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So no gripes from Michelle today. Well, the, Which is well, fine. the, the salad could, with, the, the, salad with the omelet. Oh, the salad mm. with the omelet. Oh, yes. Yes. Sure. yes I yes. think my gripe of the day is. Give me one second. How I wrapped my my, <laughs> my gripe of the day. My gripe of the day is in America how tax sales tax is not factored into the price. That is Great such gripe. a good and topical gripe. Good gripe. Uh, <laughs> that as you are setting up your e-commerce store, you need to also have that be a part of what you're doing. You have to sure, collect yeah. sales tax. Yeah. yeah. Creators True. should know that. Yeah. Our first merch drop, we forgot to do that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, on yeah. Shopify, we forgot to collect sales tax. And that then meant we had to go back and retroactively pay that. So, mm-hmm. um, yes, that is a great. That's a good That's a great, great, great. It drives me crazy. Why, why not? Yeah. Why is sales tax, like when you buy something, I should be able to do the mental math of what I'm buying in the grocery store yeah. as I'm getting it. I yeah. agree. It feels like I'm guessing. Mm. Mm. What a gripe, Michelle. Oh, yeah. Michelle Correa, yeah. everybody. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. So how long is this available? A couple weeks. Okay, a yeah. couple weeks, and then it's gone, and then you'll mm-hmm. reevaluate. And figure yeah, it out. yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for well, having Michelle, me. Michelle, thanks thank so much for coming, coming by. by. Thank yeah. you for such a delightful all this Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah. thank, thank you for yeah. all the... <laughs> The generous, kind words on on this episode and the last one. I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. I'm out. See ya. I'm going back to the surface of the ocean, out of the deep end. (laughs) (laughs) Do I just roll out of here? Yeah, just just, just just roll out. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, just slowly roll out. (laughs) Yep. That's how it works. I'm still, how am I still up here? Well, that was cool. That was great. History. Yeah, I want a box. I want uh, a box. Not me. I shouldn't say that publicly. No, right? I shouldn't say that publicly. Because uh, yeah, someone somebody, in the comments will challenge you. Someone's going to challenge me. And then you okay. got to do it. All right. Well, challenge accepted. Nope. Um, not on this channel. <laughs> well, that was really cool to have Michelle here. And honestly, your guys' questions were really fun to answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, building brands is a huge part of the next chapter of the creator economy. And thanks so much to YouTube Shopping for sponsoring this episode and giving us this topic. Uh, this was awesome. Again, if you're a creator in the partner program, you can connect your store in the back end in your YouTube studio and you can tag products on your videos. That is, it's a huge moment in time for YouTube. I think this feature is really going to change the game for a lot of creators. If you have more questions about shopping, you can pop them here in the comments. You can also put them in our Discord. The link for that is in the description. All right, we'll see you next week.